Hey everybody and welcome to today's Take Heart. We're continuing our series looking at the stories of Jesus and the one we're going to look at today Jesus tells in response to another question that he's asked. The question comes from an expert in the law who stands up to test Jesus and says, uh, you know, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, what do you think? Uh, which is a great response to any question I found. And uh, the guy says, oh, I've got to love God and love my neighbour. And Jesus says, brilliant, why don't you go off and do that? And then the guy wants to justify himself. He, he must have felt a bit silly in front of the crowd. So he says to Jesus, and who is my neighbour? That's the question. Who is my neighbour? Another way of asking the same question is to ask, who should I love? Who should I be loving today? Who should I be loving in the weeks and the months and the years ahead of me? And I love Jesus' response to the, the question because he doesn't allow it to become this abstract philosophical debate around what makes a person a neighbour. He just, he tells a story. And you can find it in Luke chapter 10, starting in verse 30. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. Jesus says there's a guy walking down uh, the road between Jerusalem and Jericho. So he earths the story straight off the bat. Answer, answer the question, who is my neighbour? Jesus says there's someone driving around the M25. He, it's like right into reality. There's someone walking down the dirt track between Jerusalem and Jericho, a notorious um, kind of route where people were often attacked by bandits. It was called the Bloody Pass in those days. Anyway, this guy gets attacked. He's robbed, he's left half dead. Then I'm sure you're familiar with the story. A priest walks past, very respected in the Jewish community, sees the guy lying, lying by the side of the road, crosses over, carries on going. Next, a Levite comes along. Again, someone who would have been involved in the worship in the temple. He sees the guy lying by the side of the road, same thing happens, crosses over, carries on going. Then a Samaritan comes past, says Jesus. At this point, the booze would have rippled out amongst his audience because there was a tremendous hatred and enmity between the Jews and the Samaritans. In fact, Jewish people in those days, devout Jews would have prayed uh, that there would have been no Samaritans in the resurrection in the last day. That's how much they hated them. And so Jesus has the Samaritan coming along and um, probably to everybody's shock, he's, uh, he says the Samaritan stops has pity on the guy, puts oil and wine on his wounds, uh, binds them up, puts him on the back of a donkey, takes him to an inn, pays for the guy to stay in the inn, and then says, even further says, look, I'm gonna be coming back on, 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 you know, on my way home, um, or wherever, I'm gonna be passing by again, and if he costs you any more money, just chalk it up to my account, and I'm good for it, I'll pay, I'll pay for that when I next come past. Then Jesus asks a question off the back of it, who was a neighbour to the man? And the expert in the law can't bring himself to say the Samaritan. So he says, the one who have mercy on him. Go and do likewise, says Jesus. It's, it's a really powerful and actually a really challenging story, this one. Because Jesus says, okay, you want to know who your neighbour is? Let me tell you about a, a story of somebody who knew who their neighbour was. They knew what their neighbour looked like. And it's the Samaritan. He's the person who knows what his neighbour is. And um, uh, obviously, first off the bat, the neighbour is the person who's in need. But Jesus goes much further than just saying that. If he was just trying to communicate to us that our neighbour is a person who is in need, then he doesn't need to have a Samaritan at the heart of the story. He can have another Jewish guy. But instead, um, he has a Samaritan. And so for the Samaritan, think about it. Like, the guy lying by the side of the road is someone who is, yes, in need, but also really different from him. Someone with a different ethnicity. That's worth allowing scripture to hold a mirror up to ourselves in the light of the, the, um, everything we're seeing in our world at the moment around racism. The Samaritan is someone of a different ethnicity to him. The Samaritan had a different set of beliefs. And... Um, you know, we see so much, don't we, at the moment on social media particularly, of just hatred for people who don't believe the same things that we believe. They voted for somebody else or they have a different opinion um, about, I don't know, some kind of policy. And, and we, we just pour hatred at each other. We, we have definitely lost the art of disagreeing well with people. So there's someone with different beliefs. 
someone from a different uh, background, from a different culture. And the Samaritan knows that. And then on top of all of that, you've got the fact that the Jews hated the Samaritans and vice versa. And um, for the Samaritan, he also would have seen that there's a huge risk for me here. It would have been a scary thing for him to stop. Not only is it possible that he would be attacked by bandits, but also you put a, a Jewish person on the back of your donkey who's been beaten up and you're a Samaritan and then you take them to a Jewish town. What are people going to think and how are they going to react? Martin Luther King um, talked about this story once and he said, um, you know, we all imagine different reasons why the priest and the Levite walked past on the other side. Maybe it was to do with ritual purity and all sorts of stuff to do with temple purification and things like that. And um, he says, I like to imagine that when the priest went past, the question that went through his head was when he saw the guy lying there by the side of the road, what will happen to me if I stop and help him? And then the Levite goes past and he asks the question, what would happen to me if I stopped and helped him? Then the Samaritan walks past and he's asking a different question. The question he's asking is what will happen to him if I don't? What will happen to him if I don't? And I find this story for me personally um, really uncomfortable reading, um, really challenging reading. I've been reading it for a long time uh, and every time it makes me a little uncomfortable because I know my tendency is to be the person that asks the question, what will happen to me if I stop and help? And I want to become, <laughs> uh, I'm a long way from it, but I want to become the person who asks the question, what will happen to them if I don't stop and help? And how we make that transition from being the people that walk past to the people that stop and help, I think in part is just remembering what Jesus says when he roots this story in the local commute um, between Jerusalem and Jericho in the everyday and with, with people and real life situations. What he's saying is this isn't that complicated. It's loving the person in front of you. And it's making sure that even if they are different, and even if uh, they disagree with you on things, and even if they hate you and there's enmity towards you, to choose to love them anyway. And that's not to say that we support everything that they support, but it's to say, I'm going to love you as a person. And we start where we are. We start with the people next door. We start with the people that we know. And we go from there. And uh, the other thing that helps us in it is is kind of, stepping back and looking at this story through the big picture lenses of the gospel. And um, when we see it through the lenses of the gospel, we can probably identify ourselves not just with the priest and Levi, or maybe not just with the Samaritan, but also with the guy lying by the side of the road, being up and broken. Because what we find in the gospel is a saviour who looked at us, saw us in our woundedness and our brokenness, and didn't ask the question, what will happen to me if I help them? Instead, he asked the question, what will happen to them if I don't? And he came among us. He, he bound up our wounds with the, the wine of his blood and the oil of his spirit. He put us on the back of his everlasting promises and carried us into relationship with the Father. He housed us in the community of the church. And he said, this is on my expense. This is on my pay. And he says, if they cause you any more issues, if you notice any more flaws or inadequacies or things that need to be healed, you can chalk it up to my account because I'm good for it. The way Tim Keller puts it is he says, we have been neighbored by Christ that we might learn to be neighbors to others. Let's choose to be, if we can, by the help of the Spirit, good Samaritans, not just today, but in the days ahead of us.